All right, everybody, welcome back live at Drew's house. Look what we've done here. Sarah Conway, mm -hmm. Drew Mulholland, Sarah fixed the lighting and gave us a whole other setup. Not too bad. This is the other side of our kitchen. This is the other side <laughs> of the kitchen. Slight like little shift. The lighting got weird once the sun went down. Later. Yeah, it's just been getting darker earlier, so now the lighting's all off. It's still not great. It's a little fuzzy. And now you're happier, though. You're but it, it's better than having a light shining, like, right over your face. She was very critical. One of the shows I did by myself, she was like, bad lighting. <laughs> I said, okay, well, then we'll have to fix that. Um, very excited about today's show. Mm -hmm. uh, a man who I've said is uh, one of my uh, favorite songwriters of all time. Um, so I think he's probably the guy I listen to most these days. Um, Chad Stokes, Dispatch State Radio, his recent project is The Pintos. Um, and we usually, this time of year, I headed over to the House of Blues for that uh, Calling All Crows show. He's always doing mm -hmm. work for charity. Usually picks one to put money towards and try to raise money forward towards and awareness every single year. And, um, well, this year it's going to be virtual. Like everything else, I'm going to miss not being in a club this year, seeing them. I know. It's really a bummer. But... but what can you do, I guess? <laughs> he's still, it's cool that he's still trying to make it work. They're putting a virtual show on. You pay. The donations go to the cause. He does great work for charity. Um, mm -hmm. He also, that New England Music Relief Fund that I had a few artists on a week or two ago, uh, Will Daly came on, Hazel Dean Davis. Uh, Chad is a big part of that as well. Um, doesn't always draw try to draw attention to himself on these things, but uh, he's a big force behind that as well. So very excited. Chad Stokes, you call that dispatch show at Madison Square Garden back in the day, the favorite concert you've ever been to, correct? Yeah, and I've, I've been to a good amount of concerts. That is still my favorite concert that I've ever been to. It was great. Very good. All mm -hmm. right. Maybe I'll make sure to tell him that. Apparently you're going yeah, to teach. I think, yeah, you should do the interview. Just oh, you and him. Me, all right. Very good. You're going to go. Take, I, I actually just felt a dog cross at my feet. No yeah, kidding. they're all over us right now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> at least they feel, they feel the snow out there. Okay. Um, Sarah Conway, thank you. Uh, thank you. Let's bring in Chad Stokes. Okay. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Live at Drew's house, another edition. Uh, as mentioned, I bring in one of my favorite songwriters, Chad Stokes uh, continues to just uh, bring out great, great material. Uh, we talked last year, right around this time, Chad, we did it by phone. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate it. I know you are a busy man. I, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, how is everybody in the family, first of all? I like to ask that in a pandemic. Uh, these are tough times, and uh, how's everybody doing? Yeah, thanks for asking. Everyone's healthy and and driving each other a little batty, but other than that, we're good. <laughs> And the uh, and, and you said the the newborn isn't exactly a newborn anymore, but you still got uh, a young one running around. I spend most of my most of my I was going to say waking hours. I spend most of my all hours with her. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very good. No 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 kids yet here, so I don't. Uh, I, I can imagine there's less sleep these days for you, but. Uh, but well, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like we, you know, we look at each other because the older ones are in school, and the, the the young one and I, we look at each other. We every morning we say, "Okay, what what are we doing today?" <laughs> my, my wife works a lot, and as you know, like as a musician, it's you know, it can be uh, it's it's harder to make a living that these days. So thankfully, we're able to lean on my wife and. And uh, I look after the kids. I, I want to, um, I obviously want to talk about Calling All Crows in a second, but um, I do want to, I, I had just mentioned in the intro that I had a couple uh, artists on here last week or a week or two ago um, that are part of the New England Musicians Relief Fund, which I know you have been a, a big part of as well. We had Will D Daly and uh, Hazel yeah. Dean Davis on, and they were just fantastic. Um, and you have done great work as well uh, for them. So first of all, thank you on behalf of all the uh, musicians out there that are struggling. Uh, just from your perspective, what's it been like? I mean, you're obviously established. You know, you've made it. I know you hate not playing, but these artists that are that are trying to make it and had their momentum stopped, it's just so tough. Yeah, I think really brutal, <clears throat> brutal for for the some 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 of the younger artists out there. Just just you know, just getting going, that kind of thing, right? Um, we were lucky. Uh, we had Brad and I were together. Um, uh, my Brad, my partner in Dispatch, we were together in uh, February recording. So we had all this material to kind of fine tune over the over the COVID, you know, over the last eight nine months. So uh, we had a, a bunch to do, and a, and you know, there's nice recording and writing going on, but yeah, touring is not happening, and and especially for the the venues and the people who work at the venues and all our crew, you know, that's when it really hits home. It's just like 
get, you know, I, I know uh, unemployment is just about to run out. So it's like, I have some friends who are like going to Guatemala to where they're, they can stretch the dollar, you know, just trying to, trying to figure it out, but it's so rough. I and mean, you remember those days when, when things start building and you start seeing more and more people come to your shows. I mean, that's an exhilarating experience, I can imagine. Um, and it's, it, to have that stopped is just, uh, it, it's just going to be brutal and agonizing. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's such a fickle business anyways, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're just putting out a record or you're just, you're just starting to get going and, 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 it, and it comes to a halt like this, and you know, it can really it's always a gamble even to go out on the road, you know? And, and, and so there's, there's a bunch of musicians out there that are just like, well, you know, like, I don't think I can keep doing this. I think I gotta, I gotta do, I gotta go to plan B or whatever, just because, you know, it's money's so short. Mm. It is a, a crazy time. Um, I was just telling my wife was here. She did the intro with me. Um, we were talking about how it's kind of a, it feels like a little bit of, well, in many ways, it feels like an empty December, but part of our tradition this time of year is heading over to the house of blues and watching you and a bunch of great bands, uh, play and, you know, support these great causes over the years. And, uh, that obviously is not happening in Boston live this year, but you're still making it happen. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we're still, it's, I believe it's our 13th uh, annual benefit weekend and um, we've done them all over Boston and, and lately at, at House of Blues. And this year it's focusing on our campaign called Unlocked Voices, which has to do with uh, ending mass incarceration. And um, we're getting together with the Pintos and, uh, and it's been a while. I think this is, I think this was billed as our one Pintos show or you know we did play in January so so it's not quite true we did we were touring in January if you can believe it mm -hmm. um the Pintos and I and uh but we haven't we haven't gotten together and played these songs in a long time except for the some virtual stuff that my brother Willie and I have done so uh it's gonna be a fun night we have a we have a full set which I, I don't think I've done um since since the pandemic started the uh i know the the virtual thing and i've seen you do plenty of stuff online i i know um probably not something you imagine putting so much time into if you I were to ask you this at this time last year but uh it is cool i mean i know you you want to stay connected and some artists have done a better job than others uh how important for it was for you just to keep kind of showing up a little bit hey guys you know good to see you i hope everybody's doing all right yeah i mean i i i like all of us i uh, you know different tendencies i i that the hermit like inclination uh came pretty naturally to me <laughs> so to kind of just close up and uh you know kind of live like you know we're we live on this farm with my parents and my siblings and so um we do have a little bit of a community here and it's, it's so in a way is it in a way it feels just like it's like 1800s or something you know we just like stick to each other and that's it uh although it's not without its complications um but i will say the feeling of the feeling uh, of 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 connecting in that way especially kind of right after there was this kind of because before it would be like, okay, what are we doing today? What's the, what's the cause? What, you know, uh, what, what songs are we doing, Willie? You know, are doing, you know, so it's a, a bit, uh, a bit chaotic, but I think that feeling afterwards, after connecting with people and writing back on the little chat pages or whatever was really, uh, that felt real good and kind of a reminder and just so helpful to just, even if it's like this, how help, how, humans uh, how it, this is good for us it's good for us to see others and be with others and um share stories and and listen so it's uh i you know it's wild that we're still doing here we are still doing it and we're going to be doing this for another few months and um just gotta like hold on keep wearing masks and one of the reasons we're 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 benefiting um uh, this weekend, why we're focusing on on uh, incarcerated people is because of how hard they've been hit by the pandemic, and how our justice system is so screwed up, and and how many of them shouldn't even be behind bars and are just awaiting trial, aren't even convicted, right? So, it's really a tough. Okay. <laughs> right now. You can say, say hello. <laughs> um, so it's just such a such. Uh, 
uh, our, our prison system is so screwed up anyways. And on top of that, you have uh, these poor men and women behind bars. Um, they, they, are not, uh, they are not being taken care of uh, as they should be. It's impossible to stay clean. So COVID's everywhere in the prison system. And it's, it's just a nightmare. And you were going to go in that direction even before the pandemic hit, as far as knowing. So with your kind of this mission kind of changed a little bit over the course of time. Yeah, we were we were we were working on on uh, working with these great partners of ending mass incarceration, and um, we had to just uh, pivot a little bit and and send hygiene kits to prisons. You know, like do something that was tangible and something that we could. Uh, that you know where we weren't going to be out and about and playing concerts or what so we you know try to figure out what could we do all these great causes over the years you mentioned it's your mentioned it's your 13th go around um with this and it's uh i've talked with you in the past about this i know and the music seems very hollow without the charity part involved uh i know that's pretty much your stance Uh, talk about that a little bit oh well i'm fascinated by by that idea and i there's always great quotes i I don't know off the top of my head but what what is the responsibility of the artist you know and um you know so i i I do personally i don't think every artist needs to feel this way but i personally do feel that responsibility as as someone who has a platform you know however big or small to um to do what i think is right um but 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 for me, it, it came from a love of protest music as a kid, not even really knowing what what that is, what the songs were about. But there was just maybe that maybe that something uh, uh, that essence of the song that I, I felt as a 10 year old would that where I could feel maybe I didn't kind of know, but I could feel this song is about more than the melody or whatever, you know, and I think that's what's so powerful when when music and when art and activism come together it's uh it's it's amazing you know it's it's something that's to this day you know really uh, fires me up you know ever since i've been in uh, high school and again we're joined by chad stokes but uh, ever since probably my early high school years i have been able to find you on a stage whether it's been with dispatch or state radio or more recently the pintos um how strange is this for you not playing in front of people here regularly. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's the longest hiatus you've probably had since getting on any real stage. Yes, we, we did do, Willie, my brother Willie and I did do one show up in Stowe, Vermont towards the end of the summer where people were spread out. Yeah. And that was, that was odd in its own, in its own right. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I really miss, you know, I really miss the camaraderie of the crew and the band and the adventure of being on the road and just, you know, city to city to city. You never know what's going to happen. I, you know, I do miss that, but I also love being, it's great. I've, uh, as, as you know, I have three little kids, so it's, it's great to just kind of circle the wagons around here. And, um, you know, today we're, we're, we started working on the the DIY hockey rink um, in the field, so it's uh, it's stuff like that 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 kind of keeps. I've, I've done so much touring in my life. It's nice. To, it's it's. I must say it's it's nice to just like to be at home and to, and to and to be to not having to not have to leave every you know three weeks for for whatever amount of time. Yeah, as tough as the world is out there right now with three young kids, uh, it must be kind of a rewarding time to be at home and just kind of, you know, I'm sure you're cherishing those moments a little bit. Yeah, I try to remind myself to cherish them and that it's going to go by kind of quickly. But as all parents know out there, it's it's a difficult, it, it's difficult. I'm lucky that, you know, we're in this old farmhouse with, and there's other people around, you know, other relatives around. So it's not, it's not like this, but it's it's such a sad time for so many. I mean, coming into the holidays and to think of all the people that have have lost uh, who who who've lost loved ones. There's it's just uh, such a holidays can be such a hard time, anyways. And then you hear this here we have you know three hundred thousand mm-hmm. people who have died in the last nine months, ten months, and and that number is just staggering. And there's so many people that I know who have lost uh, 
lost people and um and just to think of how how tough it is you know they couldn't say goodbye to them at the in the hospital they couldn't even go into the hospital so it's it's like such a uh such a brutal time for so many and so yeah. this country i think is 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 going through so much grieving but also this burnout also economic disaster so it's like it's like this balancing act that's you know there's no real winners here it's it's really been really been awful in so many ways for so many my wife and i were watching the evening news last night and we i said to her at that 300,000 number i said it, it this i feel silly almost saying this but it almost do you feel like we're almost getting like immune to that people are just so done with this that it's almost not even registering how terror how monstrous that number is yeah i think if unless you've lost someone real close to you it's these you know um that there's only so much you know at, at the daily death toll and everything like that you know it's as humans it's hard to say how much of that we can really really process Mm. And of course, the um, the music world has been hit hard too. I know probably uh, some guys that you grew up listening to. I mean, I think of like uh, John Prine was one of the first ones to we lost here. Just so many big losses in the music world. And I know, uh, I know there, there's been tributes all over the place, but uh, just everywhere, every industry has been hit, and uh, certainly the music world. Yes, I know that's it, it's that stuff's been that's it's been devastating. What what's and and kind of. You know, I get so angry because it's it it could have been prevented had we had the right leadership, and um, it a lot of it a lot of it is uh, you know we would have had so many less deaths if we could have locked this down from the beginning. Um, but that's just the way it was. I I will say I am glad that the election turned out the way it did. That that was a that was uh, you, you can imagine if if Donald Trump won again, what that feeling might be like. I, I don't want you to cover up the logo that is on your left right there. That 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 seems to be uh, an intentional. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really, but I, I, I I'm I, I I'm a big fan of the USPS and and the clothes they wear. I, my gig pants for many many years were post post uh, letter carrier pants. There you go. Big, good ambassador for the Postal Service. I like that. Um, one thing I've always uh, admired about you, uh, and I think it's it's probably why I consider you one of my favorite songwriters these days. I, I told my wife, I don't think there's anybody I listen to more uh, than when I pull up your work. And it, it can be all over the map, any of the bands you've played with. Um, but it's, it's the work that you keep progressing with. I, I know obviously you had the big success with Dispatch, um, State Radio, same thing. Um, and then the Pintos more recently. I mean, that Pintos last album you had was just fantastic. I, it was great. Um, and it's just that you continue to just deliver time and time again. And uh, I just wonder, the pre is that added pressure to keep delivering great work? Um, well, I put a, a, you know, a certain amount of pressure on myself. Um, I think it's, I think, you know, in my career, it's, it's been somewhat useful that there, there, there's never been like a, a huge uh, apex in terms of like a song being all over the radio or anything, you know, it's always been kind of word to mouth, word, word of mouth. And uh, so my success is as where it's been, um, you know, obviously with Dispatch has some some really high points with the with the just in the sheer numbers of people who would come see us. But I feel like it's you know, it's it hasn't been kind of like dizzying crazy, uh uh like some friends of mine who who get these like gold records and hit songs that are all over the radio and then they're kind of wondering what they do next. I think for us we've always been you know, I just want to be happy with the art that we're putting out and and uh and proud of it so i just look at it from that from that standpoint and i i do i for me i just i i write a lot of little sketches and, and it's mostly about having the time to go back and trying to figure out which ones have the most potential and, and it just kind of work on them from there so you're saying you don't care at all what i think it's all about if you're proud of it right now well, I, said, I know neil young said that once <laughs> neil young is more badass than i am but uh you know i it's funny because i ha i do have different projects so like i can 
think to myself, you know, which my, my, uh, you know, and so I do kind of think in the, of the, of the people who listen to my music or our music in that way, I think, you know, uh, this group of people may like this type of song that uh, that's almost finished. And so I'll, I'll, I'll send that to Brad and the guys in dispatch and see what they think. But this is more like, I think Willie's going to like this song best, or this is really more political and kind of heavier. And so that would be state radio. You know, I thought, I know you guys are, you know, you guys are like brothers, so it, it doesn't surprise you to hear compliments, but Brad uh, Corrigan, your bandmate, in Dispatch, I saw a quote from him over the last month or so that he said, I don't know where Chad comes up with all these songs, but he just keeps coming up with great lyrics and great songs. And it's just amazing to watch. Um, does it, I mean, maybe he says those things to you in your private time too, but uh, I'm sure those compliments never get old from a bandmate, right? Oh, no, no, it's so sweet. Yeah, um, that that means a lot to me. And I, I do, I did hear that as well, <laughs> I think. Um, you know, Brad is, uh, we've grown over the years and obviously with Dispatch, you know, Pete, Brad and I, we had our, our disagreements and falling outs and getting back together and working through things. And, and so I think in our, uh, we do have a, an appreciation for each other. I was listening to, to our cover of the Kinks, Father Christmas. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just put on our Instagram and I, and I listened to it for 15 seconds and Brad's harmonies are just, he's yeah. ridiculous. The way he can sing and just kind of like go anywhere, you know, and, and, and it's so natural to him. He does, he, you know, he's just born with it. Um, so, so I, you know, I do, I think there is an appreciation that we have for each other that, that maybe wasn't quite there in the early days. <laughs> But yeah, we're joined here by Chad Stokes. I, um, I, I, you have always struck me as the kind of guy who really doesn't care if you're playing Madison Square Garden or playing uh, some bar in Boston. Um, it's all kind of the same to you. Um, but is there a moment when you look back and maybe reflect on those that growing with with Dispatch and just I think of the Hat Shell show that just I mean just ask the police got even uh, was a little bit bigger than anybody thought it was going to get. Um, I think about some of those shows that those nights at Madison square garden, which my wife maintains is her favorite concert of all time. And she's, uh, she's been to plenty of them. Um, I wonder, is there, when you look back on it, are there still some moments of like, wow, it's crazy how that all happened. Absolutely. Um, you know, as you get away from the, as time goes by between, now in the hat shell it's kind of insane to think or even the uh the shows at the garden in uh here in 2011 and a, and a, and a, and, a, and the shows at msg uh, it's it's really wild to think about the trajectory of i think when you're in it you don't really you don't really know what's i think as for dispatch i can definitely say you don't really know what's happening you think like oh this is just what happens to bands um but I think as we get take a step back, we realize how lucky we were to have that groundswell and then have Napster uh, <laughs> be born into the world. And um, you just lost half of our audience, I think. The uh, everybody under my age, I think, is going, "What is this Napster?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's it's crazy. It, it is crazy to look back at at some of the bigger shows. Um, uh, you know, it's and, and I remember being on stage and it not it being a bit hard to process uh, you know in the moment yeah i think the um, i think the one of the new york papers when you did the madison square garden i remember put that kind of title on you of uh the biggest band that nobody has ever heard of or something along those lines which was meant in the most complimentary way um and I, i'm sure you guys have heard that a million times since but uh there was some truth to that it was like kind of just it wasn't these huge radio hits it was just people talking, you got to see this band, you go to a show, you bring more friends, and that's kind of how it happens. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's so funny because I, it was like there were pockets of this country that were really into the band, uh, and I guess outside of the country, but I never met anyone, especially in the first five, six, seven years, I never any, met anyone who was older than us in the band who knew about the band. It was, so it was always our age, you know, so like there was, you just, which was kind of an interesting phenomenon. Like if, you, if we were 21 and we talked to someone who was 23 
and we were right in Boston, they had no idea who dispatch was. But if you talk to a 19 year old, they, they knew all about dispatch. So it's almost like, uh, it, it started with the, you know, it start, it started and maybe because we played high schools and we played VFW halls and it was just this ground thing that no, there were no like, uh, people who, there were no like working professionals who listened to dispatch in their early days because we weren't that age yet, you know? So it's just kind of interesting. And you know, the, the live shows too, I mean, that you have, no matter what band you're in, you can, you're a, you're a born live performer. You connect with the crowd in a certain way. And I mean, the, the musicianship is obviously great, but there's just a, uh, every show has this unique feel to it that, that you bring and you feel like you're there for this one night. It's not going to be remade again. You're not going to get this night again. Um, and I, I, I wonder how much pride you take in like bringing it every night. There's no, no crafted set list every night. It's just a very unique, you're there for those people on that given night. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, I just know as a music lover and a concert goer, what I want to see, you know, and, you know, there's definitely those moments where you're just like, just falling asleep, you know, in the van or at when, and it's go time, <laughs> you know, or, or you're sick or, you know, like it, there's, there's been times in the early days when, when we were playing a New Year's show, Dispatch was, and I had to, we were, we were doing a Beastie Boys cover and I had to run out through the crowd and, and, and puke in the, in the trees and then come back and try to finish, you know, I was just, I think, I, I, and, and so it, but I, I really, I really want to, you know, I know what I want to see and, and I know that, uh, as, as a fan of music, obviously, I want to see the band interact with each other. I want it to be, I want, I want the show to be a little bit on the edge, like it might fall apart. Um, <laughs> and I want to, uh, you know, for me, it's a cathartic experience being up there. And so I, I try to not take it for granted. And have you taken, did you maybe, I, I, every artist I've talked to said there's a little piece of them that did take it for granted now that we're in a pandemic and you can't play. Uh, do you feel like that a little bit? Like you will never, ever, ever take any show for granted? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I'm, and it's so exciting to think about getting, getting back out there again. Yeah. And I don't know if it's going to be like, if we're all going to move with some trepidation in the beginning, I'm sure, but you know, it's fun to think of a situation where it was just like, the pandemic's over and here's the first show, you know, and just everyone going bananas, uh, you know, that's kind of a fantasy and it won't quite be like that, but it is really fun to think of just, just being with others. And as we get to approach the Calling All Crows, which are going to be virtual style this year, uh, it, it does make me think back to the past ones that I've attended. Um, and we should also mention your wife, Sybil, does an unbelievable uh, job as well. Um, I last time I was, I think it was last year at the House of Blues. She was running around all over the place pre-show, making sure everything was in order, and um, you just kind of see a lot of the behind the scenes work that goes on to put that all together. Um, yeah, yeah, no, she does it all. She's, I'm, I'm the world, world's, I'm terrible at multitasking. Like I can do one thing at a time, and she, she can do it all. And she is like our fearless leader with Calling All Crows, and has such passion and commitment. And uh, as you know, for each campaign and definitely for this, for ending mass incarceration. Uh, so it's, she is, she's definitely, she, she wows me, certainly. And with like this, like amazing, like grace to her too, not only running around getting it all done, like taking the time to say hello to everybody and thanks for coming. I don't know. I found it to be very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I know she, it's funny because she hates cameras. She hates it. She hates being film she hates being the center of attention um but the way like even when she used to for state radio she was our tour manager and she just did it with with, with kind of what you're saying with humor and she she kept it light but she got shit done and she's really good at that like she just like gets it done i i kind of want to want her to run for political office but but the not being the center of attention or, or hating cameras thing is, is a little bit of an obstacle. Oh, a little bit of an inside look into pandemic talks in your house. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, um, obviously there's new dispatch work coming out. You've been pretty open about that. You've dropped some, uh, some songs. Uh, I, I know you're very excited about that. And Brad, I, I know he's very excited. Um, hey, 
Hey, buddy. <laughs> what, what is that? What do we got there? Is that a hound dog? What is that? The hound dog. Yeah, this is Simon. Uh, hey, Simon. I should bring. I got. Uh, I got a big hound dog named Henry here, and uh, and a uh, maybe like a pit bull something mixed uh, named Mookie. Oh, awesome. So I am shocked, actually. I heard, I heard Simon in the background there a few minutes ago. That is usually me. I am usually the one having to say, this is life from home. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So at your feet during the interview. That's fantastic. Mine is not here at the moment. I think Sarah was trying to keep them occupied today, but uh, that's very good. But so, uh, but the, so the, the, I imagine that's a big thing in the pandemic. It's a lot of dog time, too. I know we've been spending a lot of extra time together, the dogs and I. Yes, yes. I we my dog we actually put down halfway through the p pandemic uh in August, Lefty. And uh that was brutal because in in so many ways, but but also just because this is such a time for yeah. for dogs and humans to be together and so to miss these last 5 months with him uh at it was a real pleasure the first six months. Just uh, we knew it was possibly he had a tumor. Um, so we knew that might have been his last. And it was so in a way, you know, you know, as you know, dogs have loved this time. Yeah. <laughs> dogs and babies. And <laughs> so it's uh, it's nice to be here with Simon. And, and Simon, Simon went into a deep depression after Lefty died as well. So it's it's, um, you know, we 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 uh we share this bond as being you know being very close to this to the, I remember, the, the old dog i remember lefty i remember it probably was one of the last shows you did you remember talk you were talking about you're not sure what the outlook is but i could tell you were cherishing some of those moments uh with him there's my guy hey henry getting some getting some water over there there we go yeah, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, oh that's beautiful he's a big guy see, maybe you can awesome. say hello in a minute this is uh it's a thirsty dog, apparently. But yeah, the uh, I mean, it is. I've actually never. I, when I was young, I had dogs growing up with that. I ha actually haven't had to put down my my own yet, though. It's an experience that has to be incredibly difficult. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was my first. Like like my we we Sybil and I had had them before. You know, when we were just dating and didn't have kids yet. And um, it's um, like all, all dog dog lovers out there they know it, it's it was it was the first time for us really to make that call and that's their only the only the only thing they do wrong is their lifespans are too short right that's what they yeah. say about the dogs yeah. <laughs> um back to the uh what are you any any nerves i know you've been doing a lot of virtual stuff but any nerves about putting together this full set for calling all crows and doing a full absolutely uh <laughs> you still get nervous are you serious yeah, well, this just like, especially with the Calling All Crows, the an annual benefit weekend shows, there's like, you know, there's kind of things I need to hit, people I need to thank, you know, and so it's like, I kind of have to be on on my game a little bit more than just kind of like, you know, throwing myself around up there. I have to have to be somewhat composed. Um, and it's a, you know, I, I want it to be I want it to be very professional in, in one way so that it's not just like, like Willie and I in the back room here, you know, I want it to be, um, I want it to sound great. And I want it to be an experience that's worth worthy of, of people joining us. And, and, you know, so many people have given such great donations over the years and, and it's been such a wonderful part of what we do. So, uh, you know, I feel like it, I, I want it to be, I want it to be worthy of their contribution. It should be a very fun night. Um, talk about the uh, talk about the Boston audiences a little bit. There was one show. Um, I don't think it was the last time I saw. It. I can't remember what tour that was, but the, probably the last time you guys played the Pavilion to close out a tour. And um, I remember. I'm not really a guy who does the whole backstage thing too often, but a buddy of mine was uh, say, "Hey, come back here and meet Chad. This would be great." And long story short, I got to see that a little bit. And uh, I gotta say, it was it's kind of a strange experience. I don't know if it is for you when you have like you guys kind of walk out backstage and it's just like all eyes on you and everybody just kind of wants to shake your hand. Does that, is that still take some getting used to? I, I can imagine it does a little bit, but. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. You can't, you, you really can't think of that. You can't overthink it because it, it is very strange or, or an after show party or a pre-show hangout, you know, you have, I my default is just like I'm like the awkward 
park goer <laughs> looking at CDs in the corner, you know? So I, 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 it's pretty easy. You know, it's not like my whole life has been where people, uh, you know, where like I'm the, you know, I'm one of four people that everyone is there to see, you know, I, I the default kind of kicks in. So that's somewhat helpful. Um, but it is, you know, all that stuff is a little bit like, a, you know, feels kind of make believe and strange. Yeah, it's a, I must say, I was, I was, uh, it's, I remember telling my wife after that show, I was like, God, how sweet is that? Though he made sure he got to like everybody. And uh, I mean, I, I'm sure not every artist does that. I thought it was, um, I don't know, just kind of one of those interesting behind the scenes moments for me just to watch that all play out. But uh, I don't know, you were very sweet about it all. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. <laughs> If you, if you were an asshole, I probably wouldn't have told you, but um, <laughs> uh, Chad Stokes, final few minutes. Chad, we usually end the show with a little rapid fire. You mind doing it? First thing that uh, comes to mind, you got to answer? Right. Yeah. I really don't have any way to hold you to these rules, but um, all right. Favorite, uh, biggest musical influence of all time. Number one. Cat Stevens. Cat Stevens. All right. Uh, I like that one. Who's the... Uh, what is the best album you ever got? The one that you remember you couldn't put down for like the longest period of time? Blind Melon's first record. Look at you. You're nailing this. All right. What is the best venue in all of music to play? The Barrymore in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. <laughs> I, I have to ask a follow-up. Why? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, I feel like it hasn't changed since the seventies. It, it really looks, it feels like you're in 1971 when you're playing it. Like you're in, uh, I don't know, like you're like, like you're in, uh, you know, like, I don't know. I felt I, we just had a really fun show there and people were coming up and like sitting on the, I think at the end, everyone was on the stage and just chilling and we were playing and it was like this, this feeling and, and it old, like an old, theater and so that it was seated but it was still uh you know everyone was like standing on the seats and i don't know there's something about it all right very good i, I like that what is the favorite boston venue to play small or large could be anything i would have to say hmm. That's a tricky one. Sorry, I'm not being so rapid here. No, uh, okay. I, have a, I have a special guest coming up, I think, that while, uh, while you think. Come on, buddy. This is Mookie. Come here. Oh, he's getting heavy. He doesn't want me to pick him up. Come on. Is he named after Mookie Betts? He is. My favorite ball player. Laylock. All right, Mookie Betts. No, it's Betts. We, di we didn't have to trade this one to L.A. He was a little concerned. All right, well, at least he won, right? That is true. Um, come on. Come on. Say. There you go. There. Oh, what a cutie. Hey, say hi to Chad. Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> He's a good dog. He's the puppy in the family. That's awesome. I would uh, say, you know, I guess my favorite in was like, I really like playing Harper's Ferry. Yeah. I always thought that has a new one, right? New name, Bright Music Hall. Yes. I always like that one. You've done a couple surprise shows there to promote albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good. That's always cool. All right. And what is the, uh, what is the, what is the show when you look back on it? The one that's like, that was the night, like that was nothing could have been better about that night. Have you hit like the perfect show yet? Or are you always chasing it? Hmm. Uh, you know, it might've been that show up in Madison that I was just talking about. One of the reasons I liked that old crumbling kind of movie theater type place was this. Yeah. It was like everything worked. Um, you know, you don't get there every night, but you try to. Um, there was uh, some really fun shows at the 930 Club in DC. It's kind of a famous club that that uh, that felt great. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite places to play and, and a show that, uh, you know, I almost don't remember what we played just because it was so beautiful to be there and it, it's, not Red Rocks, although Red Rocks is awesome. The uh, Greek theater at that, and in Berkeley, 
yeah. is, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's like this kind of coliseum that wraps around the stage. It's all concrete. And it's very, very steep. So you feel like you're, you know, like gladiator style. You just like, it's, you are in it. And um, we paid a few shows there too. I would say those, those were some of our favorites. All right, very cool. I was actually thinking when you were going to say that, I thought you were going to say that that Portland night when you talked about the beauty, because I remember seeing you at Portland at that great little outdoor venue uh, with two, three years ago now, and you had mentioned how much it was reminding you of the hatch shell night a little bit with the water on the right. Right. And, uh, you know, there's the mass sea of crowds. I, I, yeah, that was, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Absolutely. Well, th well this, is, uh, this has been great. I do, I, I, uh, last thing I want to ask you, and I've always wanted to ask you this, um, you know you're going back with your your you know dispatch is going to be the last dispatch you obviously you got back together but um you're going to be doing your own thing for a while everybody's going in their separate direction is there a moment that comes over you when you're looking at the hatch shell and there are people climbing the trees police don't know what the hell's going on Storo drive is practically shut down completely and you're is there a moment when you guys all looked at each other and go but maybe we need to rethink this my goodness look at this place <laughs> I think it was more feeling of being on a on a giant wave at like Mavericks or something where where we once you're on it you have to <laughs> see you you try to stay on your board so I I I think it was more uh fear than anything else for us too about just we got to get through this and uh you know don't think too hard just just uh you know, don't think about everyone who's out there um, because there's too many to really process. So just, uh, you know, remember the lyrics, remember the chords, and <laughs> let's, you know, let's make a show of it. Uh, definitely, definitely freaky. And, and, and who knows, you know, Dispatch, we are planning, we are planning to play, you know, to start back again in mid-July and uh, touring these songs that we're releasing um we released uh as as of tomorrow we've released six songs from a new record so so that that machine is kind of chugging along and and we'll we'll just see we you know like all the it, everyone in our industry kind of have to see how things go as yeah. far as if it's going to be a full-blown tour in 2021 or if we have to you know wait till the summer of 2022 do you have any fears about the industry or are you confident that, you know what, there's going to be a vaccine, people love music, they're going to come back and not be scared about coming into these places and watching live music? Yeah, I mean, the only scary thing is the, how, how do we, uh, I think 70% of everyone need, how many people are going to take the vaccine? I think for it to be effective and for us to be in, it, it, we need, 70% of people need to take it for it to really um, uh, minimize the effect of, uh, of the virus. So, so it's kind of up to us, I suppose, and, and we'll, we'll see how it works out if, if there's some, um, hopefully everything goes well with the vaccine. Hopefully a lot of people take it. Uh, who need it and, and a lot of people take it in general. You know, as a country, we, we weren't able to lock down so we we do have to turn to pharmaceuticals to to carry on. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, hopefully it's kind of like the flu. It becomes kind of like the flu vaccine. Like you know, most people take it, some people don't, but it, but it's not dire. Absolutely. Well, Chad Stokes, man, this was a uh, absolute pleasure. Uh, congratulations on the new music here with Dispatch. Um, uh, are you going to tell us what your next project is? Do you go back to Dispatch? Is it the Pintos again? Are you ready? Uh, do you already have five-year plans worked out or what? Uh, I, you know, I've been talking about it for 20 years, but I'd really like to do a concept album um, that, that really tells a story from start to finish, um, kind of like The Wall or Tommy. So uh, I, I, that will either be state radio or 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 me and the pintos doing something like that or uh, so that's kind of what i'm uh you know the all this dispatch stuff is recorded and that's going to be kind of come out over the next few months but the next project is um you know hopefully by hopefully by talking about it enough it'll it'll actually happen
that's probably the person calling going, all right, that's enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ch Ch uh, Chad Stokes, uh, this has been a pleasure, man. I really enjoyed taking some uh, time with you in a casual uh, manner here. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for doing it. I know you're busy. Kids, dog at your feet, all that stuff. Uh, I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. And uh, all the best and health to your family. You too, Drew. Great to see you. Thanks for, thanks for uh, getting us together. Good luck at the uh, benefit concert. Thanks for all the work you're doing for the charity. And thanks for all the work you're doing with the, uh, the New England songwriters as well. This is a, a very cool thing. My pleasure. Good to see you. Until next time, man. All right. Peace. All right. The great Chad Strokes, one of the greatest songwriters out there right now. Um, if you're not on that trade, get on it. Whether you start with Dispatch or State Radio or the Pintos, there is a whole archive of fantastic music, fantastic songs written by that man right there. Uh, one of the great ones right there. So what an honor to talk with Chad Stokes. Um, and I really appreciate him taking the time. As you can tell, he's one of the, uh, one of the nicer guys in, uh, in rock and roll. So uh, nicest guys, in, one of the nicest guys in music. So it was great of him to take some time um, here and uh, we'll hope to see each other on the road. Like, Everybody hopes to see live music again. Hey, another great week of shows, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining, uh, for tuning in. Uh, thank you to Sarah. She did the beginning of the show. Thank you to the dogs for making an appearance. Got the whole family on board today. That was great. Uh, and again, a big thanks to Chad Stokes. Stay healthy, everybody. Happy holidays. All right? My name is Drew Mulholland, live from Drew's house. Bye-bye now.